and I got that call that, hey, we're going to bench you for the next nine games if you know you don't change your injury guarantee. So Russell Wilson in his camp, and then you got the Denver Broncos, everybody looking at each other. Who's going to make the first move? You know, I want to be here. I want to play here. I want to be able to win here. I want to win championships here. I'm not kidding when I say Russell Wilson is about to break the NFL. And before you look at this and say, Mike, Russell Wilson's washed. I don't think you understand. Nobody in NFL history has ever done or probably ever will do what Russell Wilson's about to do here. And it's all because of one team's major incompetence. So before we get to the content, make sure you drop like, subscribe, and turn on our notifications to help the channel grow. Now that we get all that out of the way, break! My Super Bowl picks that I made in my content with the Patrick Mahomes free square didn't hit, but the one that I posted onto my story did hit. And you guys let me know how much money you made in my DMs. And now that the NFL season's over, we're officially directing our attention to the NBA. I give away my picks for free at the Flight Mike on Instagram. And right now, when you sign up for prize picks, use promo code Flight Mike to get up to a $100 deposit match when you sign up on prize picks. Or you can just use my link in the description down below. And thank Thank you, prize picks, for the sponsor. Mike check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? The Denver Broncos went all in on Russell Wilson two years ago. And I think this could potentially be one of the worst trades in NFL history because this one trade resulted in multiple top 10 picks for a player that the Denver Broncos are trying to give up on already. I usually read out the first round picks that were given up for Russell Wilson, but now we could actually spell out the players that were acquired as a result of the the Russell Wilson trade because the Denver Broncos draft picks were so valuable in this trade. The Broncos got Russell Wilson and the Seahawks got Drew Locke, Noah Fant, Shelby Harris, Charles Cross, Boye Mafe, Tyreek Smith, Devin Witherspoon, and Derek Hall. This one trade in particular made the Seattle Seahawks go from a team that was trending downwards, possibly facing a rebuild, to a team that has still been able to consistently compete for the wild card playoffs at the very least in a very loaded division. And if you didn't think the Denver Broncos front office was incompetent then, how about the fact that they extended Russell Wilson when they really didn't need to? Russell Wilson inked a five-year, $242.5 million contract extension with the Broncos in 2022 without even taking a snap. His previous contract wasn't going to expire until 2024. But the crazy part about this is, and I say this in every single video I make on Russell Wilson, is contrary to popular belief, this is a good contract. And I know what people are saying. Mike, that's ridiculous. Russell Wilson is getting paid so much money. But what you need to understand is the salary cap just increased. Since then, Aaron Rodgers, Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson, Justin Herbert, Patrick freaking Mahomes, and Joe Burrow all got higher contracts. But we're not done. Tua's about to get a contract extension. Kirk Cousins is about to sign a contract extension or a brand new contract. Dak Prescott is looking to reset the quarterback market. Let me know if you want us to make a video on that. I have a lot to say as a Cowboy fan on that. So yes, at this point, considering the increase in salary cap, this was a brilliant contract to give Russell Wilson. It gives the Denver Broncos tremendous flexibility moving forward. However, this was only a brilliant contract if you knew that you were gonna ride or die with Russell Wilson. If you had no questions at all whatsoever that he is going to be your guy moving forward. And I can't really blame the Denver Broncos for thinking this. Russell Wilson was just two seasons removed from a 40 touchdown season where he threw for over 4,200 passing yards and 13 interceptions. But in year one, he looked terrible with the Broncos. So the Broncos ousted his head coach at the time, Nathaniel Hackett. They decided to double down on Russell Wilson, trading for Sean Payton. And then Sean Payton decided to go to war with Russell Wilson, immediately putting his foot down, saying that he's not allowed to have his own trainers. He is not allowed to have his own office. We're gonna do things differently. Regardless, statistically speaking, Russell Wilson improved. Now, was 
was he the same Russell Wilson from 2020? No, but was he at least above average? I would say so. A 66% completion percentage, 26 touchdowns, eight interceptions, while also throwing for over 3,000 yards, all while having Jerry Judy drop almost every pass thrown in his direction. Jokes aside, Russell Wilson improved, but something strange happened. Towards the end of the season, the Denver Broncos benched Russell Wilson, and the reason why is by far the most pathetic reason ever. And Russell Wilson said at the time what it was. They came up to me during the uh, bye week and began the bye week on Monday or Tuesday, and they told me that uh, if I didn't change my contract, my injury guaranteed that I'd be, uh, you know, that I'd, I'd be benched for the rest of the year. And uh, for, I don't know, I think we had nine games left or so. Uh, I was definitely disappointed about it. You know, NFLPA and NFL got involved or whatever, I think, but at some point. But I, I think, you know, for me, you know, I just, you know, I, I came here to, to, um, to play here, um, to, to, to win. You know, I want to be here. I want to play here. I want to be able to win here. I want to win championships here. And now we have an update in regards to the true context of the story. As Brandon Marshall interviewed Russell Wilson on the I Am Athlete podcast, and Russell Wilson told us the whole story here. And so we beat Green Bay, Kansas City. We beat them, and uh, as you mentioned, that's when, as you mentioned earlier, that's when I got that call, and I was like, I'm confused. What's going on? And I didn't believe it at first. I was like, this, this, this can't be real. And I got that call that, hey, we're going to bench you for the next nine games if you know you don't change your injury guarantee. This is once again Russell Wilson confirming what we already knew. The problem wasn't his play this time; it was the contract that they agreed to sign Russell Wilson to. Now, Brandon Marshall, by the way, does a phenomenal job interviewing Russell Wilson here. The way this man has grown as a journalist is so incredible, and I have to give a lot of respect to him. Watch what he asks him here. But be clear here, they. It's, it's not, they don't want to bench you because of play. They're saying they're benching you because they want you to take out the injury guarantee. Yeah, they want, they, yeah, they want to re push back my injury guarantee and remove it for that the rest of the year. So that way, if I get injured, they don't have to pay it. This in of itself is insane. I mean, first of all, you never needed to give Russell Wilson this contract. You were the one that agreed to the contract extension with Russell Wilson before it even kicked in. So the fact that you're trying to penny pinch at this point is ridiculous, especially considering the fact that this was in the middle of the season. It's not like the Broncos were trying to pursue a big blue chip free agent at this point. The season was already over. But that's why as a player, it doesn't even make sense to do that because you think of those Alex Smith moments and then hell, you can even go back to college like Willis McGahee, I believe it was, uh, at the U, one of his last games going into NFL, he tears everything in, or maybe it's Frank Gore, everything in their knee. I didn't want to set a, a precedent for players to remove their injury guarantees mm -hmm. too as well. And so it, it, it was it was no way I was going to do that. And so when they said that hey, we're, we're going to bench, we're going to bench, I said, all right, that, that's what you want to do. Bro, that's like extortion. But at this point, I'm going to be honest, Russell Wilson saying, I don't want to set a precedent for players to remove their injury guarantees. I really doubt that crossed through his mind. I mean, at the end of the day, this is money you're entitled to. There's an agreement that you had. You just didn't want to give up the money. And I can understand that. I don't think this had anything to do with setting a particular precedent for other players, but you know, that's Russell Wilson's demeanor. That's usually the way he plays things. You got the NFL PA involved attorneys involved like obviously well, like, I, I didn't want to but then then they kept saying it all the way throughout the week so then you know my agent talked to the nfl pa the nfl pa called me they asked you know and then they they talked to the nfl the nfl was like this can't you can't this is illegal you can't do this and so then you know all the way throughout saturday so i was just like sitting here i didn't know if i was going to play the following week. we had monday night football against the Buffalo Bills the following week. So I'm like, am I gonna play, am I not? Like, so, 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 like, so you got Russell Wilson in his camp and then you got the Denver Broncos, everybody looking at each other. Who gonna make the first move? You gonna sign, you gonna take it? No, I, I wasn't gonna do it. You I wasn't gonna blink? No shot. I ain't, <laughs> I ain't taking my injury guarantee. But. So now I'm sitting there like, okay, well, we'll see what happens. So then the whole week, all the way, and I get back on Monday, I still don't know necessarily what's gonna happen. And uh, on, that, on that Monday, that's when I meet with Sean. And Sean's like, hey, don't forget like nothing happened. We just you're gonna play this week against Buffalo. We got a big game against Buffalo. You got to go win on Monday Night Football, and I'm like, 
all right. <laughs> now here's where I have a problem understanding who to believe and what to believe. First of all, you do not want to get into this type of war with Russell Wilson. It's kind of like trying to get into a PR war with Dwayne The Rock Johnson. He always just says the right thing that you should say. I mean, if there's a person that could run for a political office once his career is over, it's Russell Wilson. Says the right thing to make the masses like him, has a whole PR team behind him. I think it, that in of itself was the wrong move, but at the same time, I really wonder whether or not this was about the injury guarantee to begin with because Brandon Marshall said that this was never about the performance it was more about the injury guarantee but at the same time Sean Payton has pretty much admitted in the past that Russell Wilson might be the fall guy here it looks like Russ is taking the brunt of the blame well I get that and, and yet um, I can't replace the entire offensive line I can't bring in five new receivers and and, it, and if it continues over a period of time, then there'll be another guy here talking to you as well. I, it, it. Now, here's where it gets absolutely insane. You guys know at this point, we've covered this so many times, and each and every time we talk about how the Broncos are flip-flopping on their position with Russell Wilson. I've mentioned in the past that the Denver Broncos have zero leverage in this particular instance because of Russell Wilson's contract. And it's so weird because they act like Russell Wilson is this big asset or they're potentially moving on from him in free agency when his contract extension is about to begin. Sean Payton has already said this. Like this article from Jory Epstein that says a Denver Broncos fan wore a shirt with eight quarterbacks names displayed. All eight were crossed out. Meanwhile, the fan was donning a quarterback Kool-Aid. The message was clear. The Broncos need to stop falling for quarterback solutions that don't suit them. Sean Payton said, it's vital. Our job is to make sure that this next one doesn't have a line through it. He then said that somewhere in the neighborhood of the next week, we're going to decide. There are a couple of factors here. Obviously, salary cap projections came out. We're further down the road with the draft class. Obviously, the pro free agents. So I would anticipate it being within the next two weeks. But what some people don't seem to understand here is the salary cap implications of this is so freaking great that Russell Wilson theoretically can go to a new team and build a super team because the Denver Broncos will be paying his contract for the next five years if he gets released. I cover the NBA on a basketball channel called The Flight Mike, if you guys didn't know. And you see this happen all the time in basketball. A free agent has a big contract for the rest of the season. He's getting paid by team A. So when team A decides to cut him, he's able to go ahead and take way less money with team B. And as a result, team B gets to be significantly stronger as a result of this. The best example I could think of off the top of my head was last year when the Lakers traded Russell Westbrook to the Utah Jazz. The Jazz cut Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook was making $48 million with the Lakers. The Jazz were responsible for paying that $48 million for the rest of the year. And since he was getting paid that money, he just took a small $1.3 million contract with the Clippers. And you don't ever see that happen in the NFL because in the NFL, you don't ever cut a player that is going to incur this large of a dead cap penalty. To give you an idea of Russell Wilson's cap numbers, he is set to count $35.4 million against the cap this year. His dead cap would be $85 million if he was cut this year. That is a record high dead cap number. You can't move on from that. If anything, it would be more intelligent to have him on the roster for one year, just so his dead cap can come down to 49.6 if you cut him. To give you an idea, the next highest dead cap hit for any player in NFL history was incurred by the Indianapolis Colts when they cut Matt Ryan in 2023. So even if the Broncos release Russell Wilson, they will still owe him $39 million for the 2024 NFL season. That's because of a fully guaranteed $17 million base salary and $22 million signing bonus. And here's where it gets crazy. Russell Wilson will not be able to make more than $39 million this season, even if he signs a deal with another club. His deal with the Broncos contains offset language. No, not that offset. What they mean is if Russell Wilson signs with another team, Denver could subtract Russell Wilson's earnings from his new team from what they owe from him, which means Russell Wilson is about to do something that I've only seen in the NBA. He gets to 
to sign with any team he wants on a veteran minimum contract. Meaning, you might see Russell Wilson play for any team in the NFL for a mere one million, two million dollars because the Denver Broncos owe the rest to him. What does that mean? That means that team has an additional 40 million dollars of salary cap space to invest in anything they want. Could you understand how insane that is? That has never happened before in NFL history. Russell Wilson can go to the Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings could decide to trade for T. Higgins and pair him with Justin Jefferson if they wanted to. The Vikings could build a super team if they wanted to based off of the amount of money that they saved. So if Russell Wilson were to sign a fully guaranteed deal worth $10 million in 2024, the Broncos would owe him just $29 million for the season. The only way for Wilson to make more than $39 million in 2024 is if a team signed him to a deal worth more than that sum. That is unlikely to happen given his recent decline in age, and at the same time, it's too good of an opportunity for him to pass up. And here's the craziest part. The Denver Broncos might actually be stupid enough to do this. According to Jeremy Fowler, everybody I've talked to around the league expects the Broncos at some point around the new league year in the next few weeks to rip the band-aid off and release Russell Wilson, even though they owe him $39 million in guaranteed money. But they can start new and he can go somewhere else. The feeling is he'll sign for considerably less, maybe even the league minimum, because he's got all that money in hand guaranteed. And so he's going to have options. The feeling I get from talking to teams and scouts is he's still an NFL starter. There will be a job somewhere for him. I'm gonna go off a limb and say, signing Russell Wilson to a veteran minimum contract makes him the most valuable free agent in the entire NFL if you're in need of a quarterback. As a matter of fact, you should be at the very top of your list if you feel like you are a Super Bowl contender and you want to go ahead, add a bunch of weapons alongside him and gear up for a huge run. This could turn out to be one of the most exciting storylines in the NFL. You could literally bring in Russell Wilson, Mike Evans, trade for T Higgins and sign Odell Beckham Jr. And you'll still fit underneath the salary cap. It's crazy the amount of options you have if the right general manager gets their hands on Russell Wilson. The top fits for Russell Wilson is the Atlanta Falcons who are in the market for any quarterback at all whatsoever. They have Bijan Robinson, Drake London, and Kyle Pitts. And you could also tap into free agency with your $33 million in cap space. The Pittsburgh Steelers are another option, but they're currently in salary cap hell. The Minnesota Vikings are another attractive destination. They have $35.8 million in cap space, but they also need to sign Justin Jefferson and Daniil Hunter, which I believe they can get done. But I can imagine Russell Wilson cooking in Kevin O'Connell's offense. Then you have the Las Vegas Raiders, who currently hold the 13th pick in the NFL draft, have $42.9 million in cap space, have Devontae Adams on the roster, and Max Crosby on the defensive end. Maybe Russell Wilson is the missing link here, and I think this team might be my favorite fit for him. So let me know in the comments section down below. Are the Denver Broncos about to make a horrific mistake? Is Russell Wilson about to break the NFL? Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.